welcome to this module 3, lecture 3. Uh, last lecture we talked about part of the concrete production that is mixing and batching and mixing of concrete. In this one we will be talking about transporting concrete, uh, transporting concrete. So, general outline of today's, today's lecture would be first we will talk about transporting concrete and then we will also talk about a special process that combines both mixing and transporting called ready mixed concrete. So, these are the two things mainly we will discuss today. Okay. So, let us look at transporting concrete. Transporting concrete there are various methods, but essentially concrete produced from the mixture is required to be transported to the forms for placing, because you cannot have the mixture right onto the form work and usually there is some distance that could be very short, very small, but some cases it could be even uh, very long. So, you got to transport the concrete produced from the mixture to the uh, form for placing. Right. Now, this handling of concrete that is transporting the concrete from the mixer discharge point to the form can lead to segregation if the hole is very long and it can also lead to loss of some amount of the slum. Right? So, these are the two issues involved with transportation loss of slum and uh, segregation of the concrete. I mentioned about segregation in the last lecture that it is the separation of the ingredients which you actually put together to make a homogeneous mix. Right. So, methods of transporting and placing which permits the use of dry uh, drier mixes are better. The reason is very simple, drier mixes means less water and therefore, your water cement ratio is low, which means cement you are consuming less and the strength is higher. So, a method which is capable of actually transporting drier mixes is always a better method. Okay. And of course, one has to select considering economy and appropriateness of the site, one has to select a particular method of transporting based on those kind of considerations such as economic consideration and appropriateness to the site. Right. So, then let us see what are the transporting methods. These methods are number one, discharge directly from the, directly for to the forms through head load or using short shoot. All right, manually using containers. This is very common in most of the construction which are semi engineered. In a properly engineered construction, uh, manual will be restricted to only very short distance and to specific height as we shall see. All right, this is but this still there is a method. A second method could be by means of barrows, wheelbarrows, load the wheelbarrows from the mixture and then. Uh, transport it to the place where you want to transport. Also in hand carts, power barrows and uh, dumper trucks or power buggies. So, these are the uh, ones through which one can transport concrete. Then dumper trucks or tipper trucks, okay, which could be either trucks could be either agitating or non agitating. Then there are systems like um, monorail monorail system, they, are, they have been used for concrete transport or transporting from mixer to the placing, place or local, you know for placing of concrete. Then uh, for vertical rise elevating towers and hoists, for three dimensional uh, distribution of concrete one can use cranes and sometime overhead cableways in revolvery projects, we shall discuss them one by one. Then small locations there can be belt conveyors uh, or, or conveyors attached to boom of a uh, maybe a uh, boom of a um, you know boom in case of a hoist or crane or similar places. So, belt conveyors and boom conveyors over small distances. Then one of the methods which actually combines mixing and transporting together is uh, ready mix concrete which uses truck mixers. So, the truck mixes as well as transport the concrete. Then the third variety is agitator truck in this same one, uh, truck mixer and agitator truck. 
Then trimi concretes methods of transporting concrete is used for placing concrete under water. Uh, pumps and pneumatic places, pumps is a very versatile um, equipment, concrete pumps that can transport the concrete and places as well. So pump is on one side, it is a means for transporting concrete from the mixture to the delivery point to placing and it can directly place it onto the form straight away. So therefore sir, it has got dual role, very versatile equipment, we will discuss about the concreting through pumping or placing of concrete, transporting and placing concrete through pumping. And then finally you can have any combination of the above. So let us look at uh, this methods of transporting one by one, what are their implication in concrete, uh, final production of concrete, right. So first one let us look at direct discharge. Now I said direct discharge is not desirable through you know like normally head load by manual means and then dump it straight onto the onto the uh, form where it is to be placed. Now this is not very desirable in most of the places and it should never be discharged more than over a 2 meter height. The drop should not be more than 2 meters. The reason is very simple when you drop a plastic mixture of concrete from a height more than let us say about 2 meter, what will happen? Uh, it will just reach the location of placement by a thud and in the process the coarser particulate system, particulate matter will spread all around leaving the soft or, or wet paste sort of material close to the place where it has been actually dropped. So the uniformity of the concrete finally uh, would be lost or, or you know the, there will be a tendency to segregation if you try to drop it from heights more than 2 meters. So this should be avoided. Short shoot with proper lower end treatment are of course simple to use and of course they are economical. Sometimes they are absolutely essential uh, with appropriate slope. Now the problem of the shoot is that when you are trying to actually transport a concrete through a slope using a shoot, the wet material, wetter material rather the paste uh, if it is especially wet concrete, paste would have a tendency to flow ahead of the aggregates. So aggregates will be lagging behind and this may result in unless the mixture is highly cohesive, the, 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 this may result in a, some sort of a segregation. So short shoot is still okay because the mixture can go almost nearly as homogeneously as possible and again the lower end discharge should not be by a uh, third sudden drop or impact but it should get spreaded well over the place in a homogeneous mix form. So uh, one, it is quite economical to use in short um, distances over a small distance, over small height and through small slopes. Usually these shoots are metallic, half round and uh, stiffened at places so that uh, it can withstand the load that is coming from the uh, wet concrete and can handle about 1500 meter cube of concrete. So very uh, uh, you know economical anyway. Long shoots are not desirable, that is because I said the segregation and if it is very long, some places the materials will stick, some places it will, you know, it will, it will stick and therefore obviously of course you need cleaning all the time, after use the shoot has to be cleaned and in long shoot this problem might be more and there could be problem of uh, segregation and drying out of the mix as it go through over a long haul. So long shoots are not desirable, small short distance sh shoots are always in use. They can be used together with many other methods of uh, transporting concrete. Some of them examples you will see later on, right. Then let us come to burrows and damper trucks. Now shoots are used as an, you know, just before placing in a foundation for example, in a foundation uh, in a uh, somewhat below the earth one can easily use this or you are dropping it over a small height even in a multi-story construction from a, from a hoist. Uh, or even from a pump, a small shoot is useful. But if you want to haul it over a long distance, relatively longer distance horizontally, uh, then you can use manual wheelbarrow. This is manual, you know, on a wheelbarrow, you dump the concrete uh, and then uh, carry it over. Now, up to 80 kg of concrete can be carried in manual wheelbarrow. This can have some problem if you do not take the full mix, the full discharge from a mix, uh, batch should be taken in a single barrow and uh, uh, carried. Otherwise you might have if it is coming from uh, part of the mix, part of the batch is on one barrow and part is on the other barrow, there can be problems because 
the uniformity of the concrete uh, first set of the, the one which is coming early from the mixer machine uh, may have more of the more of uh, one you know cement and things like that wet material some other materials uh, which may not be same almost the composition may not be same for two different half the discharge of the mixer and half other discharge of the mixture. So, there it is preferable then one complete batch or discharge from the mixture is uh, taken in a wheelbarrow and transported. Right. Uh, also, uh, the discharge should be through the bottom of the mixture, you know there are certain mixture discharge uh, uh, methods, anyway we shall look into that sometime later on. Right. Power barrows can carry actually up to 800 kg and haul over a 300 meter distance and even haul to 20 percent gradient. So, power barrows are used where your large quantity of concrete is involved, small quantity of concrete you might use wheelbarrows, manual ones. Uh, there are some little bit of problems both with uh, these barrows as well as the dumpers and trucks. These are also all these are means of horizontal transport. The wheelbarrow uh, manual ones can be used on top of in a multi-story building or over a bridge deck where the concrete is lifted by a other means as hoist or many other things towers and things like that, but the horizontal distribution is through manual wheelbarrow. Similarly, power barrows are also does the same thing and dumper trucks, dumper or trucks also does a similar sort of thing. Right. They are used for long hauls, dumpers and trucks, but both dumpers, trucks and power barrows, if there is too much of jolting, the jolting will result in the larger size aggregates to come up at the top and cement to go down. So, there is this jolting can result in sort of some sort of segregation. So, jolting has to be avoided in case of all this horizontal source of uh, horizontal transport of concrete. Right. So, dumpers and uh, this uh, um, buggies uh, also the power barrows they can uh, result in segregation. So, one has to be careful about this especially in the long hauls. Nevertheless, they have been used quite often uh, in many places. Right? So, typical dumper truck will look something like this. A dumper truck they are also used uh, in mining and earthwork. So, this, this is the dumper truck carries the concrete here and it discharges by, by tipping the skip uh, uh, tips and discharges. Well, let us look at to look to monorail systems this has been also used uh, monorail systems has also been used, but it needs a track and consists of a power wagon mounted on a single rail, tra rail track and that can move at a speed of around 80 meter 80 to 90 meter per minute. So, monorail system carrying uh, a skip or a bucket sort of thing and then transporting these are they find quite often use in uh, tunnel construction also uh, construction of um, dams and things like that particularly in tunnel construction they are very useful right. Uh, but they too have some problem of segregation the reason being uh, concrete uh, can you know during jolting again the same like your dumper trucks. Uh, here of course, during the rail over the rail joints when the, the wagon is crossing from one joint one rail to another rail through a joint there can be some amount of jolting and this can result in some sort of segregation. So, one has to look into these aspects of segregation and the mix has to be selected accordingly both for dumper trucks as well as uh, as well as for monorail system. So, mix has to be selected keeping in consideration of this segregation. Uh, so, while choosing uh, the, the system for transport one has to look into the type of mix you are likely to handle. Okay. Well, both in case of uh, dumper truck I mentioned earlier if it is you know if on a flat slab or something like this or in this case when the rail runs over uh, the, the track runs over the slab form. So, in case of flat slabs or raft foundation or similar sort of thing it can directly place monorail as well as dumper trucks can or tipper trucks uh, they can directly discharge a concrete into the foam. So, the job of placing can also be done, but however this can only be done if it is a, if, if the structure is of the kind of slabs or raft and similar sort of situation on over which the transporting vehicle uh, can run over it you know when it is it is possible that it runs over it. So, you can directly place this concrete also. So far we looked into horizontal transport, let us see how we do vertical transport of concrete. Elevating towers are used for lifting concrete, but concretes are lifted in buckets and then they can be distributed using shoots or other means such as barrows etcetera for horizontal distribution. 
quite often in the bridge deck construction one can use these towers in multi story building one would use these towers the bucket will be lifted through winch or similar other devices uh, you know uh, so so you can lift the bucket full of concrete uh, right up and then and then there again it needs a dis horizontal distribution however you need a horizontal travel or transport of concrete from the location where it is being mixed and discharged from the mixture to the point where the tower is. Okay. So, uh, this is essentially means for vertical transport. Hoist operate on a similar principle, a cantilever platform hoist operates along a steel lattice mast and we have a diagram of the same. Right? Concrete skips can be used directly that can tilt and discharge the concrete on some distribution system or for horizontal distribution system the skip can tilt and directly discharge onto it. Now, if it if tower usually of course, does not go directly onto the form it is usually not, but sometimes it does when it does the skip can directly tilt and discharge onto the form itself. This diagram shows the diagram of a vertical hoist right? and this is the hoist the mast the, 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 the bucket or the skip comes up to this swivels and discharges concrete through this chute and this chute can again distribute horizontally. So, this is a system for multi story of building construction where it can actually distribute the concrete even horizontally a combination of chute and the uh, hoist can distribute you know concrete both vertically as well as horizontally. The vertical lift is through this bucket which lifts through this tower mast and then it is distributed through this chute and since this can swivel it can rotate about. So, finally, discharge here this is a truss system which supports this chute. So, through this chute actually it can discharge at over a larger space. So, both horizontal as well as vertical transportation is covered here to support the mast you have guide support and this is the system. So, this is one system which one can use in multi story building or similar sort of situation as I said bridge deck and similar other situation uh, for distributing the concrete horizontally after lifting it vertically upward. Cranes and cableways, they are basically cranes is essentially a three dimensional distribution system. It lifts it up and distribute the concrete over a circle of its uh, radius of you know within the radius of its operation. So, it distributes the concrete both horizontally as well as vertically. Right? Now, uh, cranes and cableways are used for three dimensional transport. Cableways are essentially used in uh, river valley projects. Uh, Okay. And uh, cranes can various type can be useful in high rise building and uh, uh, many other kind of constructions also, especially when cranes are used for some other purposes lifting materials or possibly well sinking. Now, once the well sinking is over that is in a bridge construction when the well sinking is over the same crane can be used or when it is not actually doing the operation of well sinking uh, some you know when it is ideal not really used in used in some other operation it can be used in uh, concrete uh, transporting operation. So, it can lift it up uh, the bucket can be lifted up by the crane and then distributed over a horizontal position and somewhat on the vertical uh, rise at a distance at somewhat above the above the uh, grade level as well. So, they are useful in high rise building constructions especially in congested site. There can be various types of cranes, there can be various types of cranes uh, depending upon the site like you can have uh, derrick cranes, tower cranes and crawler mounted. Tower cranes are very often used in multi story building construction and then crawler mounted or wheel mounted. Crawler mounted one uh, uh, are uh, you know quite used in depending upon the terrain that you have. So, you can have wheel mounted crane or hydraulically operated crane and several varieties of cranes are possible. They are quite versatile because they are three dimensional type. right? Okay. The main consideration in selecting the crane is the height and radius of operation, right? Main consideration is of course the height and radius of operation, right? Let's see. Uh, this is the uh, picture of a uh, sketch of a cableway, especially used in river uh, river uh, valley projects. So you have this side, you have the head mast, and this is called tail mast, where you have the control. You know, this is the control head, and this is of course the other side. So cable through the cableways, main cable through which you can actually transport the concrete and uh, discharge it lower it down discharge it somewhere at the uh, pier level if it is a bridge construction 
uh, and similar sort of situations. So, they are very useful in river valley projects and uh, you see they can distribute horizontally and then as, as this uh, uh, tackle or lifting system uh, goes down, it can actually, uh, it can actually uh, deliver it somewhat below also. So, both horizontal and vertical uh, movement is possible. So, it is also a three dimensional uh, system, three dimensional transport of concrete is possible with this. Right. So, this is aerial cable they have been used mostly for river valley projects. Belt conveyors are used for over short distances, not very large distances, uh, essentially, essentially they require small power. Uh, conveyor belts are very common in actually transporting minerals, they, the transport of mineral is over large distances, but in case of concrete we just transport it over a short distance. Uh, it can transport as much as 115 meter cube of concrete per hour and this you know the main consideration of course is uh, main consideration of, okay this can go together with the together with other sort, sort of system now there is a, a little bit of problem associated with this um, it can't go beyond 30 degree elevation so you can have small elevation not very large elevation and horizontal distance small about 5 meters, 10 meters distances uh, you can cover through this. For wet mixes the capacity of the belt is reduced in inclination because it cannot go through high inclination wet mixer will have a tendency to wet mixer will have a tendency to come down. So, you cannot elevate it through a uh, uh, same 30 degree if it is a wet mix maybe it will be restricted to about 12 degree inclination right. So, this is lowered all right. A concrete can segregate because in case of belt it is a trough and it moves over rollers. So, as this uh, belt moves over the roller passes over the rollers there is little bit of jolting and uh, this can result in some material the aggregates in drier mixes aggregate going up up and the red layer of material rest of the material remaining uh, in the uh, in the belt itself resulting in a kind of segregation. So, this is uh, you know in, in case of somewhat wet mixes this is more less, somewhat drier mixes is relatively less and segregation of course, at the discharge point can be avoided using proper kind of hopper or shoot arrangement. So, both these issues segregation the type of mix that you are using conveyor belts you can select depending upon type of mix that you are using and also over a short distance uh, quite often used in uh, making precast you know prefabricated or precast pipe con production and things like that, fixed positions. Also they can be used together with uh, pumps or uh, hoist and cranes uh, together with some other system they can be used. There is another problem associated with this uh, belt conveyor system in case of a breakdown especially in if the conveyor is long the whole system is stuck it is stopped then you have to use some other means to remove the concrete that has got stuck onto the belt and then clean it. So, this is uh, another problem associated with belt conveyor system right. Initial cost of setting up is also relatively high. So, they are only used in precast uh, where you know factories where precast products are produced there it is quite useful all right. The buckets and skips are very common equipment they are used with uh, together with many things. So, some some different types of buckets which are used in concrete transporting uh, there are two types rollover or constant altitude type we have some diagram where we will be able to show you. The capacity of this buckets or skip may vary from about 0.2 meter cube to 10 meter cube where large buckets can be there depending upon the site because in bridge deck construction where you are not actually concreting quantity may not be very large you might use small buckets. But uh, some cases uh, uh, many in case of uh, some structures of uh, dam or something you might use very large buckets. Uh, control of discharge is obtained from good design in terms of shape of the gate through which the discharge is taking place. The flow should be proper and it is from the center of the it is from the center bottom you know bottom opening usually it is the bottom opening not side opening bottom opening and through the center such that whole of the material as a homogeneous mix passes through it. The ease of flowing, filling and resistance to wear and tear is the other aspect considered in good design right. Some buckets are used for underwater concreting also as we shall see later on and uh, 
these are the diagram of the two types of buckets and skip. This is the rollover type of bucket actually while filling it is in horizontal position. So, through this the filling is done, filling is done through this it gets filled in and once it is filled in this bottom is closed, once it is filled in this is lifted up and in the lifted position it is something like this. Then uh, it can discharge by opening at the bottom while, uh, while at the opening at the bottom while actually it discharging. Whereas, a, uh, you know whereas, a, a fixed height uh, not tilting type is something of this kind of bucket. This is actually the bucket, this is the lifting arrangement and filling height is up to this. So, in position this is filled from the top and this is lifted using this uh, arrangement and while discharging it discharge from the bottom, usually discharges through the bottom opening. right? So, this is called constant altitude and this is the rollover type of bucket. Underwater concreting is an important aspect, transporting concrete underwater. You can have various situations where you do underwater concreting. For example, cast in situ piles uh, underwater or some construction of walls or something underwater. Now, problem associated with underwater concrete that it cannot be compacted. So, you cannot compact it and uh, 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 concrete may be mixed with, it may get mixed with water, particularly the cement at the top and then uh, you know which it comes in come which comes in contact with the water and there were cement slurry can be washed away. So, if possible one should avoid underwater concrete. There are several other problems associated with underwater concreting. I will just mention one or two when we are uh, when we have a when look into the diagram. Right. So, first thing the concrete must be nearly self compacting if not self compacting. It, you cannot compact it, so it should actually compact on its own. Very flowing concrete is desirable, it should be very wet and should be able to flow on its own weight and get compacted. And it should be placed with least disturbances. So, what are the methods we used? One of the ways is grouting, grouting, the other is called trimming or using a bucket. Sometimes we pump because the because the pump nozzle, discharge nozzle can get go down into the water below and the, the, the pipe uh, carrying the concrete can be lowered and uh, straight away the nozzle can discharge at the bottom or sometimes dumping by bags. So, we put the concrete in bags and dump it into the dump it into the water for concreting right. Uh, now, uh, this each of these methods are used in a different situation. Uh, let's, let me first look at the bucket and uh, the buckets that can be used this can be lowered through a crane or something of that sort of. Uh, equipment. Now, this bucket is something special, it has got some sort of skirt and this is the actual bucket. So, it gets filled in from the top, lifted it up and well, why, why, when it has reached the ground where it is supposed to discharge, what happens is this portion is slightly lifted above the mechanism is there and this opens up through this lever system. As it opens, the bottom is opened like this and the from the bottom discharge takes place. But the whole of the bucket gets lifted up a little bit more and the skirt is actually touching the ground. So, this skirt touches the ground, this is the bucket is lifted up beyond the skirt and concrete is discharged within the skirt. So, that it immediately does not come in contact with the water, the cement on you know some portion will later on come up as I lift it up, but whole of the concrete does not come in contact with the water. This is one mechanism of uh, discharging concrete underwater. The more common way is through trimmy, trimmy concreting. This is called a trimmy pipe. What is done is this pipe is lowered onto the, now this is for example, for a retaining wall, very deep retaining wall, right, high wall and in this is, this is a concrete being poured not in wall, but just below onto the below water. Now, you lower this pipe, these pipes are called trimmy pipe. So, this you lower piece by piece and then at the top little bit you lower, then there is a flange through which you connect and you lower them down. As you lower them down, they go down below and within the form and then you discharge. right? Now, in case of this one as you can see the bottom of the trimmy pipe is always below the top surface of the concrete. So, concrete will go on building up as hips, concrete will go on building as building up as uh, hips something like this you know along this direction. So, concrete will actually build up as hip because discharge is always at this point and it will build up as hip from the bottom. So, only the cement 
or concrete at the top surface is in, con in contact with the water. This rest of the concrete at the bottom are not in contact with the water and we can afford to lose some amount of concrete whose property will be somewhat not as good as a bottom concrete. So, actually bottom concrete is what would be used, the top concrete would not be, but this has to be flowing so that it can continuously flow. So, there is flowable concrete, it is nearly self compacting, it should be, but there are other problems associated. For example, if it is just below the water, there is no problem, but if it is just a trench and there is no formwork, then you usually uh, stabilize such uh, for, uh, you know soil, stabilize the surrounding soil by using bentonite and such things like in case of a cast in situ pile for uh, let us say for a bridge foundation, foundation of a bridge. Now, this cast in situ pile what they do is they drill holes through uh, the ground to the you know bed level and then uh, stabilize the soil by putting bentonite slurry. This slurry can stabilize the soil. Then this is to be concrete is then trimmy pipe is lowered and concrete is then poured there. But Bentonite has to be removed by changing its specific gravity, there are washing methods. If you have not done this washing properly, bentonite quite often gets contaminated with the concrete and resulting concrete may lead to various kind of problems. So, generally underwater concrete is a difficult proposition in whichever way you are doing, therefore it should be avoided. But if you cannot avoid it, this could be one of the methods. The grouting is another method which is quite often is used in bridge construction in what is called called grouting, plugging of uh, plugging of wells, sunk wells. So, what is done is there, boulder is first dumped, boulders are dumped, boulders are first uh, dumped onto the, uh, boulders are first dumped like something like this, this let us say is the bottom of the well. So, you dump some boulders straight away and from the top and then lower pipes, before that you lower the pipes, first you lower pipes, some pipes small pipes and then boulders are dumped from the top up to certain height, desirable height as by design. Then through this pipe rich cement sand slurry is pumped or you know grout, grout is pumped through and this grout then spreads over these positions, all over this position making this as a kind of concrete. This technique is quite often used in bottom plugging of wells. So, Grouting can be one of the ways, grouting of rich cement uh, sand slurry using grouting pumps. So, actually this is driven down through pumps and then since this is open, bottom is open, this gets spreaded up. As this starts setting, the new, the material that you have grouted starts setting, you lift up the pipe continuously and uh, uh, when the slurry has you know filled in certain portion, you lift it up, raise its level and then again grout the slurry in. This is how bottom plugging is done. So, one of the ways of concreting is also grouting through using various kind of pumps, various kind of uh, pipes and pump system. This is called called grouting. The other variety, other variety could be trimming the buckets and then pumping concrete is directly possible because you can lower the nozzle of the pump into the ground, into the below the water, into the location or where you want to place the concrete below the water and directly discharge there last fourth method is put the concrete in bags and simply dump it right. So, uh, this is what is underwater concreting and then next we will come to another method which is a versatile method combines both mixing can combine both mixing and transporting concrete uh, over a large distance. Okay. This is called ready mixed concrete. Now, uh, this is used very much in places where you have congested site and you cannot mix the concrete at the site. <coughs> so, where site mixing of concrete is not possible, you can use ready mixed concrete. Uh, besides this, this has got certain other advantages. The advantage is that the quality can be controlled better because concrete is mixed at a factory. One, one case of course, concrete is mixed at a factory. So, if it is wanted, you can actually have a factory like situation where you can produce the concrete and transport the concrete to the site using this kind of uh, process which is called ready mixed concrete process. Now, what is this definition? What we understand by ready mixed concrete? Ready mixed concrete production is a process whereby mixing and transportation of concrete can be combined together and the product is delivered to the site at times right in the mold 
straight away, some cases right to the mode. So, this is basically what we understand by ready mixed concrete. Uh, the IS definition, IS 4926 is the code which deals with the ready mixed concrete. Its definition is concrete delivered at site or in the or into the purchaser's vehicle. So, it is actually concrete is sold, it is now separated out from the site activity. You can buy the concrete, ready mixed concrete can be purchased from ready mixed mix concrete manufacturer like you do many other things, uh, you know something like uh, milk or many other things you purchase from somebody and then use it. So, similarly concrete can be purchased from uh, somebody who manufactures the concrete and then the he would should deceive the, the you know the uh, producer shall deliver it to either purchaser's vehicle or uh, to the location in a plastic condition. It is actually delivered in plastic conditions and it does not require further treatment before that can be used or placed in position and then there it sets and hardens. So, you should not be doing any processing of the ready mixed concrete as defined by uh, this codal definition. right? So, this is what is ready mixed concrete. Now, ready mixed concrete can be of three kind. Right? You can have something called you can use something called truck mixer. In this case at the plant site you do not need a mixing plant because this truck can serve both the purpose of mixing as well as transporting the concrete. How does it do it? Actually it loads up the dry ingredients and it has got a mixing water tank and at the point when it wants to start mixing this water is transferred to the rotary drum and already where the dry mixture exists. The mixing process then can start while traveling and appropriately can be discharged. So, a truck mixer is the one which has got a mixer fixed onto it. It does the mixing job while traveling. So, on the road it does the mixing that means both transporting and mixing job is coupled together and then uh, discharge the concrete at the site. This is the loading hopper and this the shoot through which actually finally concrete will be discharged. This can be added up with this one and it's, it can discharge directly to pump or to a conveyor belt and the pump can straight away place the concrete. Some cases if it is at the ground level or such places it may directly discharge the concrete onto the form where it is to be placed. Something like a slab or foundation raft and similar sort of thing or for example a well cap for a bridge. So, in such situation it can directly uh, discharge through the shoot onto the location where it to be placed. Now, there are problems associated with this. You see, you need uh, 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 the you need you need lot of energy to do this. The the power required for the uh, machine is very very high. Uh, a good lot of power will be consumed in the mixing process. So, this has to have very elaborate blades so that it does the mixing. It is a rotating drum mixture. So, it will not be tilting anyway, non tilting type of rotating drum mixture which we have discussed earlier should have lot of elaborate blade system so that the mixing process is done. Then payload is relatively less compared to some other kind of system where you do not do the mixing, but then you have avoided the need for a mixer machine. This is not, not very popular, not very popular the other variety which I will be talking about a minutes later, uh, a few minutes later is more popular. Payload is less because it has to carry a separate even space would be occupied by mixing water. Mixing water will also occupy some space. So, payload of this one you need high capacity high power for such a machine such a vehicle. That means, the first thing you need power for driving the vehicle and then you need power to drive the mixing process. So, therefore, power required is very very high not a very popular proposition, but a second way of doing it is well do not mix it on the truck, but what you can do is you can go on agitating the concrete, go on agitating the concrete where it is traveling. So, what will happen? You mix it in a central mix mixing plant, central mixing plant. So, you have a batching plant there. In the previous case, in case of a truck mixer, you can have only batching plant, just batching plant, requisite proportion of the material you weight and uh, load it into the truck. In this case, you have a batching plant as well as a mixing plant. So, what it does? Batching plant and then the mixing plant you get the mix material and then it is loaded onto the truck. So, this truck it is loaded, but if you just take it normally if on a normal truck without any kind of uh, 
agitation, what will happen? It will set. So, such that it should not set, you actually keep the concrete agitating. This is your concrete and you keep it agitating at a slow speed, maybe about 3 to 4, 3, 4 rpm or 7 rpm, not more than that, agitate it during it travels. The thing is that the here the concrete is being hauled from the central plant to the side. In earlier cases, you were actually hauling ingredients. So, mixing process you could have started somewhere in between, but here mixing is already done. So, a mixed material is being transported. So, there will be loss of slump as well as uh, agitation should be done in order to avoid any kind of segregation. right? This of course, has got a small water tank for cleaning purposes later on, because as a site if the water is not available, you have got to clean it. So, if you look at such, such a truck is such a truck, such a truck is called an agitator truck. An agitator truck keeps the concrete agitating from the mixing plant to the batching and mixing plant to the site and delivers it through shoot etcetera, etcetera in the same manner as stated earlier. Right? So, this has got a drum agitated drum um, right? and uh, this is the blades through which it actually maintains the agitation act, act activity. It rotates through this axis, there is a main axis through about which it rotates and keeps the, keeps the shaft, uh, keeps the concrete agitating. Um, right. Uh, this will have high payload because now the power required will be also less. You do not require high power as much as the previous one. The power required will be less, um, usually operated by hydraulic system as you can see and uh, this is of course, the main engine. So, part of the power goes in driving, only a small part goes in agitating and while discharging of course, there is certain amount of power is used, loading certain amount of power is used, discharging you use certain amount of power, but then at that time actually vehicle is stationary. So, this is what is called uh, an agitator truck. So, this is the second mode. So, first mode was a uh, truck mixer where mixing is done on the road itself and appropriate time. So, it need not, the concrete will not be hauled for a very long time the chances of slump loss could be somewhat low, less in case of a truck mixer. But you require high power, so therefore, the machine is costly, payload is less, so you cannot deliver a large quantity of concrete relatively speaking. The other is centrally mixed concrete, so truck mixer, this is centrally mixed concrete. So, you are mixing the concrete centrally and then uh, transporting the concrete through this agitator truck. The jolting action of segregation due to jolting action such thing will be much reduced here, because you are now agree, you are actually agitating the concrete, therefore, there will be no much less jolting action. So, this is the second variety. A third variety could be called shrink mix concrete, where you partially mix in the central plant and while traveling you do the rest of the mixing. Right? Hall distances etcetera are important. We shall see this somewhat right now. Okay? So, agitator truck, at agitator photograph of an agitator truck looks like this. Uh, so, this, this is the, this is the uh, uh, loading hopper and the discharge is through this, of course, it will sh will show it through another angle and this is the basically the uh, mixer, this is basically the uh, agitator, and this is the cleaning water. Now, this agitator is covered with a cloth you can see, this is to avoid heating. In fact, you can co color it white in tropical countries or in India when you are handling in summer, this will get heated up very fast. So, it will absorb heat from the, uh, you know, it will absorb heat from the environment and uh, it will start drying the concrete at a faster rate. So, therefore, loss of slum can be higher. So, you can put actually wet gunny bag, the gunny bags can be kept wet, so that there is continuous evaporation of water from this gunny bag, wet gunny bag and thereby it keeps the concrete cool. There are various other means of keeping concrete cool, but while transporting it should not get heated up. So, you might paint color, white color to, uh, to actually uh, reject the radiation, not absorbing it. Also, you can have wet gunny bag. This is actually a wet gunny bag that uh, is used to keep the concrete cool. This is another view of the same truck. Now, this shows the discharge shoot um, and uh, you, can, you can actually elongate this shoot using something. There is some edi additional shoot available. So, this is another view of the agitator truck. Right? Okay. Main concrete technology concerns are something like this. The basic concrete technology concerns are something like this. Concrete should be uniform, because you are doing mixing or agitating process both here. So, mixer's job has been taken over at least by part. Since you are agitating, you are not really doing a mixing, but you are maintaining its uniformity. So, uniformity is very important and it depends upon the kind of blade, the maintenance of the, uh, the mixing part or the mixer part of the uh, truck or uh, agitator truck or the uh, truck mixer. Agitator truck is much more, it is more popular, can haul the concrete over 16, 17 kilometers of distance easily, no problem. 
and then there are commercial ready mix concrete available all over the world including, including the urban centers of India as well. So uniformity of concrete, the concrete discharge should be uniform even after agitation or if it is coming from a truck mixer definitely it should be uniform. So uniformity is an additional issue, there should be no segregation or nothing that should be an important issue. Second issue is of course the loss of slum and these are the main issues related to all kind of transportation. So here also these are the two issues and in order that this is uh, taken care of many courts restrict the time of haul. Time of haul is restricted from 1 to 2 hours and also depends upon the ambient temperature. If the temperature is high loss of slump will be more because it will get dried at a faster rate. So therefore loss of slump will be more. Uh, for higher ambient temperature you might even restrict the uh, haul time. The code does, most of the code does some uh, restriction on uh, hauling time. Also it restricts the maximum number of revolutions for uh, um, you know of the drum is limited to 300 revolution while at agitating speed and if it is at a mixing speed then not more than 100 rpm. Um, that is why you know that is what is done. Again over mixing is to be avoided this is also an issue. Uh, so both over agitating may result in as we shall see long time long uh, long mixing time can result in uh, segregation or grinding of some of the aggregate generating more fines. So therefore you cannot have too much of um, either agitation or mixing. So that has to be avoided besides that loss of slump would be there. So that is why the most of the code restricts the number of revolutions either in case of mixing or in case of both in case of mixing as well as in case of agitating. Now people have studied actually slump loss in RMC. This diagram shows what is a slump loss in RMC. You know it is a curve like this. So as the time of haul increases this is at 4 revolution per minute that is what is an agitating speed. You had some 100 percent of the slump this is not 100 uh, well even 100 millimeters of the slump in the beginning but with time after about 5, 6 hours there could be uh, loss of slump. But then you can use various kind of things for example you can use a retarder you can use admixtures which are retarders. Uh, retarders does what accelerators admixtures you know there are various kind of chemical admixtures I mentioned uh, when I was talking about concrete as a material. So there is a class of admi admixtures which are called accelerator which accelerates the strength. Calcium chloride is one such accelerator there are various other accelerators. Retarders are one which will actually retard the setting process itself also hardening process. In extreme cases if you add too much of the retarder it can kill the concrete. So killing of concrete means it will never set. Sometimes these are useful in sites. You want to kill the concrete for example in a conveyor belt concrete is stuck and you want sufficient time to uh, time to uh, clean this up. So you can actually add some amount of sugar, sugar is a good retarder but of course in case of ready mix concrete people do not use sugar but what is used is some sort of chemical admixtures which are retarded. There are various kind of commercial retarders in form of chemical admixtures are available. So if you use a retarder then this time possibly loss of slump will be relatively less. So uh, slump loss could be there if you have not used any retarder or even if you have used retarder the rate of loss of slump will be less. So uh, retarders are common practice to be used in case of uh, RMC. So the loss of slump is of this form. So using retarders for 5 and 6 hours effectively you can actually 5, 6 hours you can retain some amount of slump. The second way is designed for high slump in the beginning in the beginning itself supposing you need 40 mm slump you design it for a larger slump so that after the loss supposing you know that the haul time is likely to be 3 hours or something of that kind. So you design it for higher slump with a retarder or without retarder whichever way it is another way design it for higher slump so that after the loss of slump actual slump available at the site is now what is required slump what is according to the specification. Right. So slump loss is one issue and it can be tackled in various ways various ways. Uh, by using retarders, by um, uh, using higher slump in the beginning and so on and so on. Uh, now um, mm, 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 one can do something else also, one can actually re the concrete at the site, re the concrete or uh, remix the concrete by adding a little bit of water but in such case there is a loss of strength, there is a loss of strength loss would be there there will be some amount of strength loss when you have done this and this diagram shows 
if you are doing a re-tempering with additional amount of water, you add, add 10 kg of water per meter cube additional and try to re-temper it, it will gain its strength, but there will be some amount of loss in strength. So, this is not a very, very desirable way of actually, uh, you know, taking care of the slump loss, right, because strength loss will be there. But if you know the whole situation, it will depend upon situation to situation. By design, one can even use this sort of thing. So, if you know how much how much loss of strength would be there. So, design the concrete for higher strength in the beginning itself and then uh, add some water, you know maintain the initial water cement ratio lower at the site you might add additional water and then remix it a little bit, agitate it a, uh, or mix it at a higher speed and uh, then deliver it. And this will of, co of course, is a function of uh, you know temperature of the, it will also depend upon temperature of the concrete, right. Now, the issues, there are many other issues associated with this kind of ready mix concrete. First thing is uh, that while transporting concrete, one may have to get, you know, one may have to envisage the traffic conditions. So, if it is stuck in the traffic conditions, then, then you know, there can be problem. So, this uh, same condition that you are operating in, one must visualize this condition and accordingly formulate his uh, procedure or process. So, th this is one issue, uh, traffic condition and things like that. The second issue is of course, this concrete if re desired, concrete quality can be very high and not only that, the consumer is actually getting rid of many, uh, many, many sort of headaches rather. First of all, you won't have to set a plant at the site, mixing plant at the site. So, space uses, usage would be less, he won't use, he need, won't need space for uh, uh, mixing at the site, no mixing plant, no batching plant, nothing. So, space he will be saving. This can construction activity can generate certain amount of pollution, uh, dust and things like that. So, in some places where there is environmental concern, you may not actually set up a plant, set up the plant elsewhere in industrial area and uh, then get rid of purchasing uh, aggregates and things like that and handling uh, the production process. But there has to be a good control over what you are getting. So, so, so long you know, you have a good control over whatever you are getting, you have a rigorous scheme of accepting the uh, material or concrete that has come, the product that has come to you, then this would be a useful thing. Also, the thing is that quality control can be achieved uh, at the plan provided it is required, you know it is, it is desired if the intention is there. So, but there is a possibility, since it is produced in a factory like position, batching plant can be automated, mixing system by and large many things can be automated and thereby you can produce quality control by quality concrete by this sort of process. So, as a buyer one can buy the quality concrete provided he has got a stringent acceptance system for such project, project product that it is buying. Well, can be economic, the co cost can be little bit higher, but if you think of the time saving and the saving of uh, the saving of the, uh, you know, all, all uh, handling, people handling, purchases, etcetera, if you consider, consider all this, it may come nearly same, you know, cost would come nearly same. But while setting up cost is there for this sort of plants, uh, at the site if it is small concreting, it may not, you may not require large setting up cost. But however, space is one of the major concerns uh, why it is becoming popular in India, although uh, the many, many, many developed countries, many countries like Japan uses, consumes 70 percent of, of, of its uh, cement in ready mix concrete only. Many other countries uses as large as 70 to 80 percent of their cement product produced in, through ready mix concrete. Smaller other countries like, like uh, Malaysia, they use as much as 15, 16 percent, but India it is, no, at, at present it is not very large, restricted to uh, main urban centers. Uh, where there is a lot of congestion, but the traffic problem is another problem uh, uh, which one has to consider while selecting this kind of concrete. But main problem concern in urban areas, environmental concern and space, you do not have space to have uh, a plant, therefore you buy the concrete. This can lead to a good construction uh, practices and good quality concrete, right. So, this is all about um, transporting and mixing of concrete. Uh, transporting on concrete, ready mix concrete is, is, a, is, a, uh, is a process where you have uh, part, it, it combines actually mixing sometime together with transporting. 
but one most important process of transporting and placing the method which combines both transporting and placing is pumping. Well, we will have we will look into this one in the uh, next lecture. So, now we can come to the summary of this lecture and uh, this is uh, what we have discussed. We have discussed the various methods of transport of concrete and we have also discussed the issue of uh, uh, concrete technology issues related to transport of concrete that is how it is going to affect the properties of concrete, the homogeneity of concrete, uniformity and homogeneity of concrete and loss of properties like slump loss. Main concern is of course the segregation and loss of slump. Then we have discussed this process called ready mixed concrete which combines sometime it can combine mixing and uh, transporting together. But we have seen that uh, this can be a very useful method in urban areas for congested site and, uh, and, and, and can give you a much better quality concrete uh, than small non-engineered concrete when used judiciously. Next lecture we will look into the, the most versatile method of transporting concrete that is pumping together with other components of production process. So, I think this ends uh, our discussion on this. Thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to this lecture.